are you too tired to exercise or are you just being lazy? And if you are too tired, should you go out and exercise anyway and push through it? What is the right thing to do when you're too tired? Exercise is imperative, you know, for good health, but there are times that so many people are just exhausted. And one of the biggest excuses, quote unquote excuses, is you're too tired, but is it really an excuse? Um, chronic fatigue, not chronic fatigue syndrome, but people just being chronically fatigued is a common problem. Um, there are so many different reasons for fatigue, and there are some times that you have to look at that as a symptom that something may not be right. Okay, some reasons for fatigue are obvious, lack of sleep, um, poor nutrition, um, you know, stress, you know, stressful lifestyles, uh, emotional stress, physical stress, yes, those are reasons for fatigue. And, you know, those types of fatigues, especially, you know, lack of sleep or, you know, being stressed out and having a couple difficult days, those should get better after a couple days of some good sleep, you know, rest, recovery, maybe a vacation, you should start to feel a little bit better, a little more energized. But some people really do have a lot of problems with being chronically tired. Sometimes my clients will come to their workout and I can see that today is just not a good day, you know. And I have seen clients have weeks of times like this, you know, weeks that they are just exhausted and they really cannot push themselves and they are not being lazy. Like, they just really don't have it in them, you know. And to take a client like that and push them to the extremes and, you know, try to make them muscle through it and force themselves through it can sometimes, in a way, do more damage than they are doing good. Okay, so those are the things we're going to talk about right now. Some of the basic things you want to look at if you are chronically fatigued and you're having a hard time is you do want to look at your nutritional deficiencies. You know, having low vitamin D, okay, it's almost an epidemic now. So many people have low vitamin D levels. They're ranging in the 20s and the 30s when they really should be above an 80. You know, when you look on your, I don't know if you ever had a physical and you look on your physical, on your CBC, you can see some of those levels, okay? But low vitamin D can be a contributor to fatigue. So can low iron levels, okay? So those are some things that you want to look at and you want to talk about with your doctor. Okay, being dehydrated, um, just a fluid loss of as little as 2%, okay, can cause mental fuzziness, can cause short-term memory loss, um, a little bit more fluid loss past that. That can definitely make you tired and contribute to muscle fatigue. Um, I know for myself, drinking water is one of my worst things. I'm not a water drinker. Um, I really have to focus on making sure that I'm getting water in and I do feel the effects of being dehydrated. Okay, but when when does it become something more? Okay, when is it that you, um, you know, are going past the normal um, in terms of you know, feeling tired, okay? So when you wake up in the morning, do you feel like you need another two or three hours of sleep? Um, between the hours and three to five in the afternoon or two to five in the afternoon, do you feel like you're just gonna start to crash? And you know, those are times that we start to reach for some carbs or some sugar or some coffee, okay? Do you need coffee, coffee to get out of bed in the morning? You know, those type of things, those are big indicators. Um, and if you pay attention, if you are fatigued, you'll see that your body's gonna be calling for some of those substances every two or three hours, okay? So there are some things to look at. Sometimes we think thyroid, you know, if you have an underactive thyroid, yes, that can make you tired. Um, but even more so than that, there are other things that um, cause this type of fatigue. Some of them specifically adrenal issues, okay? Looking at your adrenal glands, making sure your cortisol levels are not too low. Um, a good saliva test can show a pattern of cortisol throughout the day. So it'll take a snapshot of four times throughout the day, eight o'clock, noon, 4 p.m., and 10 p.m. And a lot of times if I look at that panel on a client, I can tell them before they even tell me when they're crashing. So you can see on the, some of those panels, you can see that, oh, by you know noon, they're already starting to have a rapid decline. So I would say, oh, probably by two o'clock, you're really starting to feel it, you know? And they'd be like, yeah, you know? And I'd be like, by four o'clock, you're really tired. And I said, by nine o'clock, you're dead asleep on the couch. And they're like, that's exactly what happens to me. And you can see that on those panels. So adrenal function is definitely, um, a player in how well your body is able to respond to stress, 
okay? And also to how well you're able to make it through the day well. When you have adrenal issues too and your body isn't responding as well as it should, okay, your call out for carbs and sugars is going to be even more because your body's gonna be looking for that type of energy. Okay, other things that can cause uh, fatigue issues are undiagnosed food sensitivities, okay? Because this can cause an immune reaction, okay, in your system. It also causes an imbalance in gut flora, which is also called a dysbiosis, and your body is working overtime in order to handle that, okay? This can alone can, too, make you tired. This also, too, can have an effect on your adrenal glands, okay? And your adrenal glands can then have an effect on your thyroid glands. So all of these things, your adrenal gland and your thyroid gland are your body's master regulators. And these two systems, if they are not working well and they are not working well together, can cause a whole host of symptoms that make it seem like a laundry list of problems that you have. Okay, so some, looking at some of these things, okay, and making sure that everything is in check, you know, just like you go and you get a tune-up on a car, okay, and you're checking to make sure the levels are all where they should be, we really have to do the same thing with our own bodies and take responsibility, you know, to look at our panels and become educated about what we're looking at so we can see, like, you know, where am I really low? Because remember, lab ranges that are given on conventional lab tests are so broad that the range often includes a pool of sick people and a pool of well people. So that range is so big, okay, that by the time you fall out of that range, you are pretty sick, okay? Conventional labs are not screening for those who are healthy, but they're looking for specific disease. Okay, by the time you actually have a disease, there were all these little areas of dysregulation along the way, you know, that were heading towards that point. And if you can learn to catch those, okay, you'd be much better off. Something as simple as taking a good multivitamin, okay, a lot of people don't even take a multivitamin, and we are not able to get a lot of the nutrients that we need from food, okay, so our body can suffer in that way. So some little tips that you can do to make sure that you're getting enough sleep, for one. And if you can't get enough sleep, if you have a hard time sleeping, maybe using something like melatonin before you go to sleep, or something like 5-HTP, uh, which helps with neurotransmitter balance in the brain, can help you to sleep better. Okay, making sure that you're not waking up in the middle of the night randomly multiple times in the evening. Even that, too, that signals that something may be off, okay? Some people can have hormone imbalances, especially women. Okay, a drop in estrogen, uh, too low levels of estrogen can cause your body to wake up in the middle of the night. Also drops in blood sugar, that too can cause your body to wake up in the middle of the night. Those types of lack of sleep, okay, can contribute to fatigue during the day, okay? You want to make sure that your cortisol output is the best that it could be, and if it is too low, you know, you wanna look into that and find out why. Uh, making sure that your nutrient levels are up where they need to be, especially your, your micronutrient levels and your minerals, okay? Making sure that those are where they need to be. All of these contribute to overall wellness and living a life with vitality, so then you can go about your day and have the energy to exercise. If you don't have the energy to exercise, take that as a clue. Most likely, you're not being lazy, okay? People want to be able to have energy. They want to be able to do things and participate in life. They don't want to feel like they have to just sit on the couch. At least, I don't believe that. Um, from what I have seen is that when people do resolve these issues, they are so excited to be able to do things and participate. So take your lack of energy as a clue, look into it, okay? And if you have any questions, just uh, Facebook message me or, you know, send a message to my website and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Take care. Bye.